Hello YouTube, Sidekick here back in my trusty A4E Skyhawk. Today we just have a short video about ground handling in the A4E and I wanted to uh, do this because a while back the Community A4E Skyhawk released version 2.1 of the module and there are some really significant improvements. Um, we'll talk about some of the other ones in a minute but the thing I really wanted to focus on in this video is the ground handling and I wanted to do that for two reasons. First of all, um, ground handling in the A4 is a bit of a challenge. Uh, but secondly, the devs have done a really, really good job at trying to give you some better tools for mastering that challenge in version 2.1. Okay, I'm just going to freeze the sim here for a sec um, while we talk a little bit about ground handling in the A4 and some of the improvements that have been made. Um, there's two things that they've worked on. The first is the controls indicator that you see there in the bottom left hand corner, which you bring up, of course, by pressing the right control enter key. Um, the second thing is that they have really improved the sound model to give you some better ideas about what's going on underneath your feet. So um, let's take a look at taxiing and taking off in the A4E. First things first, when you're taxiing the A4, you really have to do it with the controls indicator up. So uh, start with right control enter. Now, the important things on the indicator that you want to notice are, first of all, um, the wheel brake indicators, which are those little yellow bars that keep popping up and down, and also the open yellow circle at the very top, which is the nose wheel position indicator. Those are the two pieces of information you really need when you're taxiing. Now, the other thing you need to know is to understand why ground handling is a challenge in the A4. Um, and that's because you only have differential braking. You can't steer the nose wheel directly. Now, pilots of the time would have been quite used to this system. Um, it's the way tail dragger warbirds worked, and most of them probably would have come from that background. But it's harder for sim pilots, um, kind of for two reasons. First of all, a lot of us are coming, uh, instead of coming up from warbirds, we're coming back from more advanced jets that frankly have steerable nose wheels. And that's just what we're used to. So that makes it difficult in the first place. But it's also hard because sensing the alignment of the nose wheel is actually kind of hard in the simulator. It's probably harder than it would be in the actual aircraft. In the actual aircraft, this is one of those things you would kind of feel in the seat of your pants. I mean, the nose wheel's pretty much right under your seat. But those kinds of things are kind of hard to sense in a simulator because they're not really visual. They're tactile, and obviously you just, you just don't have that sense. So that's why you want to use the controls indicator and keep a real eye on that nose wheel uh, directional indicator because that's really the only way you're going to be able to tell which way the nose wheel is turned. So the thing you need to understand about the nose wheel is that it's completely free. And so it responds to... a couple of different forces. It responds to the, obviously the differential braking, but it also uh, reacts like a normal uh, free running wheel would, which is that if you start moving it forward, it tends to come back to the center line. And so it's kind of understanding exactly um, what's happening with the nose wheel is really important to understanding which way the aircraft is going to go. And you just have to practice it to get a feeling for how the nose wheel reacts in certain situations. So yeah, basically it's another one of those things where practice is, well, it may not make perfect, but it's certainly going to mean a lot less frustration, I think. And we'll try and, and uh, notice what's happening with the nose wheel in this video. Maybe uh, that'll help you with your own practice. The other thing to notice about uh, the controls is, first of all, with your wheel brakes, um, you're probably going to want to go into your controls and set them up so that they're inverted. I'm not sure if it's that way for everybody, but for me, uh, I always have to invert the brake axis on the A4, actually on most aircraft. Otherwise, the brakes are on by default and you press them to take them off, which is not what you want. The other thing to notice about the controls indicator with the brakes, and I'm not sure this is true, but I think it is is that the, um, because they start from the bottom, you kind of think that's the zero position of the brakes, but it's not. I think the zero position is actually in the middle of the screen, so on the horizontal axis, which means that when the brake indicators are below that level, they're actually in the negative, meaning they're not applying the brakes at all. The brakes actually only start to be applied when the indicators get to midway up the screen. And of course, this is another thing that if you had tactile feedback, you'd feel the brakes starting to grab. 
but you can't really in the sim. So you really do have to watch that indicator. And when the brake gets to halfway, that's when it's actually applying friction to the wheel. Okay, well, let's restart the sim and just uh, take a look here. So uh, the other thing to notice is that we uh, have the throttle indicator on the left. So when you want to move forward, you just give a little throttle. And once you overcome the stiction, now you'll notice that the nose track a little bit to the left. That's because the indicator, the nose wheel indicator, was slightly to the left. And we have to jockey it back and forth. I'm just jockeying the brakes back and forth to try and keep it down the middle. Now what the devs have done with the controls indicators, they've made the nose wheel position much more sensitive than it would normally be. It's now actually uh, basically on a logarithmic scale. So even when it's deflected a tiny amount, you can see it. Uh, because even a small amount of deflection will make a difference in uh, the fine uh, pointing of the aircraft. So as you see, we're going down the runway. I'm just jockeying the brakes back. We're just trying to change the direction just a little bit. And as you can see, at this rate, when I change the direction of the wheel, it basically comes back to center pretty quickly. So I can change the direction, uh, and then it stays in the direction I pointed it. And now as we come up to the big turn here, we're going to get a slightly different behavior, as we're going to deflect the nose wheel a long way to make the turn. Okay, so we should come out on the runway here, and now I'm giving it a fair bit of left brake. The nose wheel deflects, I stop giving it brake, and it stays deflected, but it slowly comes back to center. And so the trick is to try and arrange it so that the nose lines up down the runway just as the nose wheel gets straight again, and that takes a bit of practice. And then, you know, a bit of fiddling, and then as we stop, and there is another thing that just happened that is new, and that is that you heard the sound as the brakes locked. Now, this is something that has been happening all along, even before in the A4, but the difference was you didn't know it because there was absolutely no indication, well, very little indication that your brakes had locked up. Uh, in fact, the brakes will lock reasonably easily. It's actually, as you can see there, I didn't have to apply very much force to the brakes and we weren't moving very fast to cause them to lock. As soon as they lock, uh, the handling, obviously, characteristics of the aircraft change very dramatically. So if you don't know you're skidding, you really don't know why the aircraft isn't responding the way you expect it to. So um, adding those sounds is really critical. It also points out, as we'll see, that it's really important to be aware of some things that don't seem to have anything to do with handling the aircraft on the ground, but in fact make a big difference. And um, two of those things are the flaps and the spoilers. And um, I'm just going to restart the sim and put them down, and then I'll explain why that's true. Okay, basically the point here is that the wheels are going to skid more easily when there's less weight on the wheels. That makes sense. The things that takes the weight off the wheels, other than, you know, putting less gas on the aircraft or putting fewer bombs on it, is the amount of lift that's being generated by the wings. The amount of lift that's being generated by the wings is a function of speed, but it's also a function of the flap setting and whether or not you have spoilers up. So I've got the spoilers to, uh, activated and I've got the flaps up and we're just going to do a high speed taxi and then we're going to try and stop. And you're going to see that as I'm stopping, I'm also raising the flaps. The spoilers have come up. I'm just applying brakes, trying to keep straight. Every once in a while I hear a skid noise and I try. I try to counteract that, and you can see that we're stopping in a reasonably controlled fashion. And now we're going to do uh, the big turnaround, and again, here's where we're going to really need to watch that wheel, uh, nose wheel position. So I've given hard left brake, the nose wheel's all the way over, and as you can see, we're turning almost sideways. The wheel's underneath our seat, so we get that sideways motion. Now. I'm going to try and straighten the nose wheel. Uh, if I had done this right, I would have just kept moving forward a little. Okay, so not too bad. Not pointed exactly where I want to go, but I can sort that out. Okay, so once again, you can see as we're taxing at reasonably high speed here. Now I'm in a regime where when I add a little bit of brake, the nose changes, but the nose wheel deflects back to center almost immediately because it's rolling forward. So, you know, the key to remember here is that when you're moving very slowly or stopped, 
the nose wheel is going to retain deflection even after you take the brake off. When you're moving forward, it will tend to sort itself out. That's how the cast ring works. Uh, you'll notice that uh, struts a little bit off-centered uh, from the center of the wheel, and that's what uh, allows the wheel to have this tendency to go back to the middle if you're rolling forward. It's all built into the physics of how this works. It's designed that way. Um, if you don't know what's happening, it's difficult, and even if you do know what's happening, it's really difficult to sense those things uh, because you just don't have that side-to-side -side feeling that you would if you were actually uh, in the aircraft. Okay, we're taxiing at a fairly rapid rate here, and I'm doing that on purpose because I'm going to get down to the end of the runway and try to turn off the runway. Um, and we're going to see what actually happens when you try to turn when you're going too fast. And again, we're going to notice it this time because we have those new skid sounds. Previously, uh, you would have had really no indication why you're getting this funny behavior. So let's watch as we try to make a turn here going too rapidly. I'm not trying to break the aircraft, but I am skidding and the nose wheel is skidding straight. And even though I have full right rudder applied, I didn't go to the right. Now if I didn't have that skidding sound, I'd have no idea why the aircraft wasn't responding to my input. It would be very frustrating, and uh, I know from experience because it's happened. So now with those skidding sounds, it's immediately obvious what the problem is, and you take steps to fix it. It's a, it, it's a small thing, but man, it's a huge improvement in terms of understanding what this airplane is doing under your feet. I can't emphasize enough how important that just that little bit of sound modeling really is to making all of this make sense. I, I used to be pretty frustrated trying to uh, taxi the A4, but I'm, I'm really enjoying the challenge now because I finally feel like with these improvements in 2.1, the devs have actually given me the tools to master this challenge. And it's great to have the challenge, and taxiing the A4 is a challenge, and it's really important that we know, you know, uh, for high fidelity reasons, what that challenge is like for a real pilot. But it's practically impossible to do if you don't have the right tools and if you don't understand what's going on. Um, so what the devs have done is actually given us the tools to master this challenge, and it is a challenge. Uh, but I'm finding it's actually kind of fun uh, now because I can actually get better at it. So we're going to go back out to the runway here one more time and I'm going to do another high speed taxi and brake but this time I'm not going to manage uh, my flaps and my spoilers correctly so I'm not going to arm the spoilers and I'm not going to retract the flaps when I reduce the power and you're going to see just how much longer um, it takes for me to actually get the aircraft under control and stop. Okay once again we're going to try and see if we can get around the corner here Okay, apply the brakes, wheel deflects, don't apply them too much. You see it's straightening out a little because I'm moving forward. And yeah, coming back to the middle, maybe a little bit faster. Try to get it lined up. And like I said, it's going to require practice, but it is possible to get better at it once you know what you're looking for. Okay, well, we're aimed off the other direction this time, but at least the nose wheel's straight. Okay, this time I'm not. I'm going to take the spoilers off arming. I'm going to deploy the flaps again. Uh, last time, as soon as I cut the power and started to brake, I raised the flaps. This time I'm not going to do that. So once again, we're just going to build up some speed here. And now cut the power and start to brake without lowering the flaps. And you see we start to skid almost immediately can hardly apply any brakes at all without getting that skidding going. It really is very difficult to control the aircraft. It's, it's amazing how much of a difference not braking the lift has on the handling characteristics of the airplane. You really do need to be aware of it. So if you've ever had trouble landing the A4 and getting to stop in time, chances are this has been the problem. If you didn't have your spoilers deployed and you didn't raise your flaps as soon as you were on the ground, you're going to have a much longer landing roll. But without the skidding sound, you wouldn't know why. You'd just say, well, I can't stop the A4 on any reasonable distance on a runway, which is true if you don't raise the flaps and put up the spoilers. So now you know uh, when that's happening because you actually see uh, here the skidding. By the way, you'll see skid marks if you look at the external. Uh, view as well, but that doesn't help you very much when you're in the cockpit.
Okay, so that's uh, my short video on ground handling in the A4. Hopefully that helps you understand a little bit more what's going on. Uh, I really do think with the new tools that the devs have provided, this is now a skill that is much easier to get good at. Uh, I'm going to spend some time practicing it. I hope you do as well, and I hope you continue to enjoy the Community A4E Skyhawk, which is, as we all know, forever free, as well as, uh, for my, well, not money, but for my opinion, still one of the best modules in DCS. That's all for now. This is Sidekick, signing off.